This framework, together with the muscles which move the bones, gives the body form and shape. The skeleton is made up of a central or axial portion, a left appendicular portion, The central or axial part of the skeleton is of the bones of the head, neck. These include the skull, the vertebral column which supports the skull, and the ribs and sternum. The ribs and sternum with part of the vertebral column form the chest or thorax. The appendicular part of the skeleton is made up of the paired bones of the limbs. In the lower limbs, two strong hip bones support the trunk, and in turn are supported by the bones of the thighs, legs and feet. In the upper limbs, the lighter shoulder girdles join the arms to the trunk. The place at which two or more bones meet is called a joint or articulation. For instance, two bones meet to form the shoulder joint, and three bones meet to form the elbow joint. The shoulder and elbow joints are movable, but some joints are immovable, such as those found in the skull. The skull forms a protective case for the brain, and its bones have saw-like edges, which fit tightly into each other. These immovable joints in the skull are called sutures. The body also has joints which are slightly movable, such as those found in the vertebral column or spine. Because the vertebral column has such a large number of these slightly movable joints, the trunk can be moved quite freely forwards, backwards, and from side to side. At the top of the column, freely movable joints allow a greater range of movement for the head, such as looking over the shoulder. The vertebral joints are slightly movable because they have pads of fibrocartilage joining the bones. These pads of fibrocartilage can be compressed in front, at the back, and at the sides, thus allowing movement of the column. The legs and arms have the greatest number of freely movable joints. In this action, the shoulder, elbow, forearm, wrist and finger joints are all being brought into play. Let us look at one type of movable joint, the elbow joint. In all movable joints, the number and direction of the movements depend on the shape of the articulating surfaces of the bones. At the elbow, one of the forearm bones, the ulna, has a half-moon shaped surface. This moves forwards and backwards. 
on the pulley-like surface of the humerus. The radius glides with it. This is a hinge joint. When the movement of the joint is watched by means of X-rays, the softer tissues, like the muscles, hardly show, although the bones can be clearly seen. Another important arm movement is the turning movement in the forearm, which takes place at the joints between the radius and the ulna. Here, the movement is being seen by means of X-rays. Notice how the radius turns round the ulna, carrying the wrist with it. The greatest range of arm movement is found at the shoulder joint. At this joint, the arm can be moved quite freely. The same kind of joint is found at the hip, and the same movements can be made, though not quite so freely. The leg can move forwards, backwards, outwards and inwards. Describe a circle and make a turning movement. The shoulder and hip joints are universal, or ball and socket joints. At the hip, the rounded head of the femur, or thigh bone, fits into the deep socket of the hip bone. Watch the head of the femur move in the socket as the thigh bone moves forwards. Backwards. Outwards, and inwards. In a circular movement, and in a turning movement. In freely movable joints, the articulating surfaces of the bones are covered by a thin layer of smooth cartilage. This reduces friction. The ends of the bones are enclosed in a protective sheath of white fibrous tissue called the capsular ligament. The capsular ligament has a lining which extends along the bone to meet the edge of the cartilage. This lining, a synovial membrane, makes a lubricating fluid which further reduces friction. The capsule may be thickened in places to give extra strength. Joints of this kind and the other types we have seen make movement possible. Movement itself is brought about by muscles attached to the bones. These bones form a jointed framework the skeleton, round which the body is built.